Good evening, and welcome back to your weekend ministry support team. Today, we're discussing part two of Overcoming Grief during the holidays with our returning guests, Dr. Joseph and Linda Cook. So please go ahead and like, share, and start your watch parties because you don't want to miss this discussion. It's not too late. Go ahead and start your watch parties, everyone. Yes, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, so we had Joe and Linda Cook on before and they did such an awesome job. We wanted them to come back again and offer some more information and experience as well as biblical knowledge concerning this topic that we are continuing our discussion on. This is actually part two. We did two weeks ago, um, with Pastor Davidson, the same topic of overcoming grief during the holidays. And so we are doing another overcoming grief with the holidays with the cooks because there is more information to be shared. And there is so many people that are having an issue with the holidays right now. A lot of people have lost loved ones during this year alone, unexpectedly quickly, suddenly. And so the grief kind of hit without warning. And we want to be here to support you through this process. We want to let you know what you can do and how you can get through the holidays. Um, if you've gotten through Thanksgiving with joy, that's a blessing. If you still have any family this Thanksgiving, that's a blessing. You know, if you were able to communicate on phone or social media, that is a blessing. And if you're still able to lay eyes on your loved one, count that as a blessing. So we mm -hmm. wanna make sure that you count all your blessings. We wanna make sure that you have any support, any prayer, anything that you have need of. And we're here for you. We're here to support you, to guide you through and to give you some answers. So this discussion today will hopefully help those. And then we know there are many of you and we are often praying for you to get through this season, you know, with Christmas coming up and the new year beginning, we want you to have all the support that you can muster. We wanna be there and wrap our social media arms around you as much as possible. And, um, so we're going to go ahead and start and like Kim said, get your watch parties going, go ahead and like and share. And we will be discussing this topic of overcoming grief during the holidays with the cooks. And we welcome you, Joseph and Linda, welcome back again. And if you guys don't know, Joe and Linda have been ministry leaders for over 25 years and they are truly prepared to discuss this topic and we want to hear what they have to say um if you tell us a little bit about yourself for those who did not see the last time you were here let us know about yourself and then sister kim would give you a question and lead you from there okay well well thank you so much again for having us and we are uh truly elated for being asked to come back sometimes uh when people ask you to come back, they're giving you another chance. Because if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. So we're back again and we are so delighted to have this uh, monumental opportunity to come and share in these moments of celebrative time, but also a time of sorrow when we have lost a loved one. During this pandemic and many thousands and thousands, hundreds, of thousands of people have lost loved ones during this past year and the pandemic is uh, on a surge again right now and we don't know who's going to be here tomorrow but uh, thank God we know who holds tomorrow and he holds our very hand. I'm Joseph Cook, this is my lovely wife Linda of 44 years. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And uh, we've been together and we've been sharing in ministry uh, my wife has been a hall, uh, a hallmark of support and, and love and sharing and criticism, positive, of course, but uh, <laughs> she's been there for me and, uh, and gives me sound advice. 
and uh, uh, on things and decision making. And uh, we just love God and we love his people. And we just thank God again for this marvelous opportunity of grace in sharing with you. Thank you so much. Okay, Linda, you have anything that you want to say to before we get started? No, I'm good. He introduced <laughs> both of us perfectly. Amen. Praise God. Oh, well, <laughs> again, we want to say thank you for um, coming back again. And we pray that um, everything is going well with you and your family. And we're going to go ahead and get started with these questions. Okay. So the first question that I want to pose is, what is the one of the most important things that a person should remember during this time of year as they go through the grief process? Well, one of, one of, the, one of the most important things is that uh, uh, our trust and our hope should be in Christ. Mm -hmm. Our loved ones are gone. It's a, it's a hard thing to bear, especially during times of the holidays and even their birthdays when they come around and their absence, there's a void there that is irreplaceable. But God has a way of, of filling the void. We need strength in these times. And the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And when we focus in on Christ and who he is and what he's able to do for us, what we cannot possibly do for ourselves, the Lord will gear us up to have the strength we need to be overcomers. Now, our loved ones are gone. It's a hard thing to deal with. And uh, it's a heavy burden. But the Bible says that we are to cast all of our cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. And he knows our sorrow. He knows our burden. He knows our grief. He knows the weary days that are ahead of us because see, we'll never forget our loved ones. And, we, and it's hard to release them because they've meant so much to us. And, and uh, when they have played such a crucial role in our lives from many days gone by, and now that we're uh, more senior and uh, we had relied on their presence and their, and their input in our lives. And then now they have been silenced and uh, all we can reach back and do is remember some of the great things they've said to us and some of the times that we've had together and shared with one another. We can pull from that uh, strength in remembering them in love and in peace and in joy, and yes, even in sorrow. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Uh, Sister Kim, do you, you have a question? Yes, I was waiting for Sister Linda. I thought maybe she wanted to put, uh, have an input on that. <laughs> but my question is, how can you have a good time when your heart is so heavy during the holidays, missing those loved ones that are gone? Well, in, in, in those <clears throat> times, uh, you know, the shock, sometimes there's, there's denial, there's a numbness. Uh, uh, a disbelief uh, that they're gone. And, and uh, especially if, if those persons who have gone from, uh, from labor to refreshment uh, meant so much to us, when they mean so much to us, it's very difficult. And you can't say it's not hard. It is a difficult time to, to, to go through without them. And uh, especially if they were the spark of the party you know, the light that, uh, that brought joy to the entire family. And when they're gone, all we have is great memory of them. And we can pull from, again, those memories, uh, the joys, the, the love that they shed and shared uh, among us, uh, the peace that they brought. You know, some people have a uh, presence when they come into a room. And uh, with that void being there, it's kind of hard and difficult, but we can remember as family members, as friends uh, of our loved ones, uh, the marvelous atmosphere that they set. And you know, sometimes God, sometimes God passes the baton onto someone else in the family, and and uh, we can just pull from them 
and remember our loved ones. It's kind of difficult now. It's not not an easy thing. We we went we've gone through this year and in the past uh, uh, the grief time, the grief bearing. My wife, uh, she can tell you so much more uh, because she really was really really burdened by uh, the loss of our our daughter, and uh, and this year the loss of our wonderful nephew Willie Carlton Cook. Uh, it is, it is a tremendous void. Uh, his presence, we look forward to hearing from him. And then the things that he would do during the, the year, he had a catering service called uh, Simply Delicious. And he would feed hundreds and hundreds and even thousands of people uh, biannually during the Christmas season, during Thanksgiving. And then, uh, and, and, and he would do that free. And, uh, and uh, that's, that, that void is gone, but we remember him and we love him and we still feel his presence. And uh, when loved ones gather together in, in, in family settings, uh, pull from the memory of, uh, of, of that loved one that you shared so many times because they're still in our hearts, amen? amen. They are still in our hearts and, and we can look to the scripture and it says, God, cares about his people who are suffering. Uh, Psalm 116, verse five, he cares for us while we are going through, while we're burdened down and heavy laden. Uh, he cares for us and, and we, can, we can cast all that to him and he can restore the joy of not only uh, the, from the bereavement, but the joy of our salvation. And then as we think about our loved ones who have gone and passed on in the Lord, in the Lord. They passed on in the Lord. So to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We have that marvelous assurance that they're with him, rejoicing, never to be burdened yeah. with this life again. And uh, what we have to do is know the assurance that we'll see our loved ones again. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Let's start hollering here in a minute. Amen. 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 Uh, Sister Cook, you have anything you want to add to that? Yes. In, in addition to that, <clears throat> what I what I do is my daughter, we would all laugh about it, uh, but what she would do no matter what, every year I would try her try to get her to give get different gifts. She always gave socks. I, I, I don't <laughs> care. She would she would buy the kids yes. another toy or something, but she always had to give socks. So how I get through every year, everybody gets socks in honor of her. And it may sound silly, but that's a way for me to get through the holidays because Christmas and Thanksgiving was one of her favorite times of the year. And so um, Christmas, they know they're going to get socks. And now it's a joke. Everybody, We, we joke about it. Um, we, I didn't get my socks, somebody will say. And I'll probably have to move in the corner or someplace. But you can think of something that that person liked or did during the holidays and just re redo it, repeat it, do it over again, do it a different way, whatever makes you feel good about it. You know, when we lose a loved one, at that particular time, it might seem like that we just going to stop living. But what you have to realize is that because you, live, you lose a loved one, you have to keep living no matter yeah. what. So, I mean, unless you're sick uh, and, you know, they, the doctors have said you only have a certain amount of time, but if not, you have to keep living, even though some of us feel like we don't want to, but we may have other children, we have our spouses, we have our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers. Yeah. You have to think about how you are appearing to them. And yeah. if you are a stalwart in the family, and you just give up, then that make other people want to give up. Trust me, it was times I wanted to, but I always said, well, you know, I got my husband and I got my grands. And so that sort of kept propelling me forward. But the one thing that I found that really gives me a little bit of solace is the sob giving. Mm -hmm. So everybody coming to the family, they get told why they're getting socks for Christmas. <laughs> One of, the, one of the difficult things that people are going through now 
uh, during the pandemic. Uh, one, and it's really a very difficult uh, circumstance uh, where we have loved ones who we don't see. Mm. You know, they, they're in the hospitals and we don't see them anymore. We don't see them in, in alive and mobile and uh, boisterous. And we don't see them. They, they, they seemingly, uh, they die alone away from us. Now that has to be very, very difficult. And it is, it is, it is difficult because you know normally we we have a gathering and we're around the bed and uh, we may be singing hymns and praying and keeping the spirit alive in the room while we we await the dispatch of God's angels to come and handcuff our loved ones and take them away uh, that is not being done now this is this is a strange time where others are gathered together around our loved ones, caring for them. And thank God for the doctors and nurses and attendants that, 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 that comfort our loved ones in, in the time of our absence. And, uh, and, uh, but then they're not alone. They may be away from us, but they're not alone. They have our love, they have our caring, and many of them uh, can see their loved ones via the, the cell phones, thank God for that, mm -hmm. but their presence yeah. is not there as far as physically. Uh, yeah. but, but, but that's a, that's a new kind of grief. That's a new kind of burden that, that has befallen us as believers. But, uh, but thank God for technology and thank God for those who are in the medical profession who so marvelously care for our loved ones. And, 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 and let me tell you something, in order to be in that particular field, you have to love people. You can't go into these fields and fields and practices uh, for the money. You have to have a heart for the well-being of people, for their health and their welfare, for their caring. And, and this is overwhelming. We have to continue to pray for those who are in, who are practitioners, who are who have been educated to care for. Uh, I believe God is going to overwhelmingly, when this is passed, those who have been in the forefront of caring for our loved ones, uh, they are going to be blessed insurmountably. I believe that in my heart. And uh, the churches that are caring for people who, families who are going through, pastors who have reached out and ministries, uh, extended ministries that have reached out to help us go through these times uh, are going to be blessed insurmountably. I believe that in my heart. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. And you know, something you said uh, earlier, I believe Sister Cook said how, you know, uh, it's important to remember them by something they did. Absolutely. And I, I think it would bring a lot more joy and comfort to the family and to the individuals involved to, you know, celebrate those yeah. things, those little things. You know, some people, you know, don't, don't mention their name, don't say anything. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to think about it. But it helps in the healing to actually Absolutely. mention their name Absolutely. and Absolutely. to actually talk about them and rejoice over them and you know remember the things they did and and laugh at the things Absolutely. they laughed at Absolutely. and you know the the silly things they did the, oh, yeah. the when they burnt the cake on Thanksgiving you know things <laughs> like that and you know the stuff that you would still laugh about as a family mm -hmm. as if they were there you can yeah. keep those memories going Absolutely. and say remember when That's remember true. when and mm -hmm. then you'll find yourself actually in a better place, remembering yes. the good things and actually celebrating their life mm -hmm. and not Absolutely. their death. And, and you know, absolutely. and yes, there is a void there and nobody can take that place. Nobody, nobody knows, right. nobody. you know, that feeling like the individual going through, nobody understands the way you understand. Mm -hmm. So then nobody actually bring joy to their name like you can bring joy to their name. Nobody can express like you can express 
what this person meant to you. So talking about it and bringing it out and, and being, you know, just expressive and, and silly, even something silly as socks, it has such deep sentimental value, but at the same time, it's funny. At the same time, it's expected, you know, Amen. and it can help just like, oh my goodness, this is, this is some way this person will never be forgotten. Amen. And, and, Amen. The, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. I just love how you express that. And, you know, it, it just keeps their memory alive and it keeps, it keeps Amen. their life in Amen. your oh, yes. heart, Amen. you know, Amen. and, and what, we, what we find a lot of times is people mourn to the point that they don't even think about the good times. They mm -hmm. mourn to the degree yeah. that they forget Absolutely. that this was a person, a living person. Yeah. And you can actually talk about this person and the life that they shared with you because they were here and they oh, were yeah. important and they still are important. Absolutely. And, you know, and it's a beautiful thing. I, I just love that. I, and I think somebody, this will help somebody, um, you know, the giving sock example. Um, will help somebody say, let's do something to remember mom by or to Absolutely. remember dad by. And, Absolutely. you know, and every year we're going to do this and then it becomes a tradition. And that person's <laughs> name and memory can go on for generations. To Absolutely. Come inside. One simple act. I, mm -hmm. I just love that. that is, that's a beautiful thing. That's just Praise wonderful. Thank you. But what, what we have to remember also is in order for us to heal, we have to grieve. And, yes. and a lot of the process and a lot of the reasons that a lot of people who have lost loved ones or people that's dear to them don't heal is because they don't properly grieve. Right. If you cry or whatever, however you choose to grieve, then do that so that you can heal. Mm -hmm. And then once you grieve properly and you heal, then you can move on and you can do those things to help you celebrate that person's life. But sometimes we when we, lose love, when we lose loved ones, I don't know, we want to put them up, put it on a pedestal, leave it there and never go back to it. And in doing that, we never heal. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to understand that, but we never heal. And I couldn't understand why, even though she was my child, why it took me five, at first five years to get to that point where I felt healthy enough that I could really interact with my family or others and not cry, not uh, mm -hmm. wanna go to, I had uh, several coworkers lose their mother and I, I couldn't go to the funeral. I, I couldn't do it, I just couldn't do it. And I said, Lord, I said, that's not me because those people looked to me for support because they knew I always supported them. And they said they understood, but I wonder if they really did. But I think after the loss of their mother, we had a long conversation and they would always come and talk to me. So in helping and talking to them, I helped myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel myself through that grief. Do I miss my daughter? Of course I do. Mm -hmm. I will always miss her. She will always be a part of me or a part of, a part of us. But I can move on from that. And, I, and like I said, this, we do the sock giving. But people have to realize that in order to heal, they, have, they must. It's not a if they can or if they want to. It is a must that mm -hmm. they grieve however they grieve so that they can start the healing process. Amen. So the qu next question is, um, how can you explain or give advice to help people know that it is okay to once you have grief, to go back to a uh, normal or semi-normal or you know a continual lifestyle, you, they can still enjoy life without feeling like you know they're ju they just skipped over the person and just went into enjoying life. Um, how can you talk to them about getting back to that? once you have, you know, and you still may have some grieving times, but once it's, you know, it's time to move forward, how do you get back to a, a semi, semi-normal life and how is, how to make them feel that that's okay? It's, 
Well, as I said earlier, a lot of times uh, we have to keep living. We're, I, I'm, I'm not rich. I don't know about anybody that's listening. They might be rich. If you're rich, when I mean that you don't have to work, then you can languish in your grief. But other normal people, we have to re resume our lives because number one, we have other, maybe other children that we have to take care of. We have our spouse, we have our household, we have our job. And if we don't get to the point where we can function, then something is gonna happen. Either we're gonna lose our, our home, our spouse, or possibly our job. And I assume that if we're working, we need to work. And if it's okay, if you go to work, I did it plenty of times. I would go to work. I would greet people as I walked in and went to my, my area. They would never see me again until it was time for me to leave. I did my job on my breaks, I cried. I would go to the bathroom and wash my face up. I go back to my desk. I do my job till lunchtime. I cry again. And I just did the process over and over until I got to the point where I could sit at my desk and not cry at my lunch and at, and at my break time. But it's okay to go back to your regular life. It's gonna be a person missing, sure enough, but you always have that person in your heart. You have <laughs> pictures or whatever, but it's okay because if you don't, you're gonna lose everything and you're gonna end up in a worse spot than where you are by grieving. You're gonna lose a lot of stuff. And, you're gonna, and I mean stuff, I mean people. I'm not talking about material things, I'm talking about people because you know, as, as a person or as people, we have a tendency to distance ourselves from people. If they seem like they just can't pull themselves up by their own bootstraps, we contact them less. We don't wanna be around them. We be around them less. Because what we say is, oh, they always sad, and I don't want to feel sad all the time. And even if you are around people and you try to fake it, they know that you're faking it. Oh, she was here, but she really wasn't into it. So it's okay after your period of grieving that you go back to your normal life. It's okay, whatever your period of grieving is. I grieve different, you grieve different. Don't ever let anyone tell you, Oh, you know, stop doing that. You need to be strong. Uh, strong for who? <laughs> strong for what? If, if I don't get through and I don't heal, then I'm not going to be worth nothing to anybody. Mm -hmm. So just remember, it's okay to go back to your normal life when you feel like it's time for you to do that. Not on anybody else's timeline, only on your timeline, mm -hmm. because only you know how and what your true feelings are. Well, one of the things that uh, we, 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 could, we must come to grips with, and that is that grieving is not a sin. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a sin. It's not a sin. Uh, uh, the Bible uh, in Matthew, the fifth chapter, uh, God will bless mm -hmm. and he will comfort those who mourn, who mourn. And we're going to mourn. Amen. Exactly. And there'll be resurfacing periods of time when we have, it has been years that we've lost our loved ones and we've gotten into a pattern of, uh, let's say, so to speak, normalcy. Uh, is, there, is there an abnormality to uh, the things that we go through? Maybe. Will we get back to the perfect normalcy of life? Maybe not. But uh, we can create a new norm for uh, the absence of that loved one. And, and, and then just the, again, remembering them, the high times and even the low times. Because when we go through with our loved ones, every day is not peaches and cream. Amen. Every day is not onkadori and all that. Uh, we've had ups and downs with our loved ones, but we try to remember all of the good times. Right? It might be helpful to remember some of the hard times too. You know, and you can laugh through those things because those those are days now long past. I remember when Linda made me mad. Amen. And the Lord had taken her, but she's still here. Praise the Lord. But <laughs> <laughs> I remember when she did this or that. But but we can laugh 
and even some of the hardships oh, yeah. uh, that we've had with our loved ones. And, uh, and, and the Lord brought us through and gave us strength to carry on in and and normalcy it may not be the perfect norm but it'll be the new norm right. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, of uh, of a period uh in our lives and and still we remember our loved ones with joy and with mm -hmm. peace and with love and maybe yeah. sometimes yeah. a little anger uh that we didn't get it get it across to them but those things are past we forgive mm -hmm. and we don't forget but we forgive and we move on with our lives in remembering our loved ones for who they were for us and how, uh, yeah, listen to my granddaughter holler upstairs. <laughs> but <laughs> she's gonna get a word in. Uh, she was upstairs <laughs> praising God just a minute ago. We were, we were talking and she was saying hallelujah. <laughs> Amen, we're alive. Amen, praise God for being alive. But anyway. Uh, is there a normalcy? There, there will be a new normalcy, a new normal for us uh, with those uh, uh, in our remembrance uh, as we move on with our lives. You know, we, we miss Janelle right here in this house, and, uh, and, uh, but we have a new norm. Uh, she's not here. We can't bring her back, but her love still overwhelms us. Oh, yeah. Uh, the socks. Amen. Uh, and uh, and just many other things. There's so many things that we remember about our loved ones. And uh, as we as we create a new pattern of normalcy for our lives, Amen. Amen. Well, I I have uh, as you were speaking, um, I thought of this um, how in in life, you know, we we were talking about how do we get back. Uh, to the new norm and pressing forward to get to the new norm, but explain to uh, the people today how it is okay mm -hmm. to have a step back. Sometimes you you have to just take a step back, and 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 just take a look at how things really are, and then get back to establishing what that new norm looks like. So when people step back, it's okay. So okay. if okay. Belinda okay. talking about how she had to take a step back at work to get mm -hmm. back to how it's okay to, to, to work, but you still have to take a step back and, and grieve a little bit. And people don't always grieve in one big piece. Sometimes okay. it's portions of grief and th making it through a single day. So if you could just kind of work that into an answer because <laughs> I, I know that I said a lot but just kind of talk to to us today about what that can look like from both of you it can look like what I was talking about earlier if if you're at work or at home I, I'm telling you what happened to me one day um the song take it to the king take me to the king uh that song came on the radio and it may, it may not make sense to people, but as she was singing it, the things that she was saying registered with me about my baby. I had to pull off the side of the road. I got out of the car, ran around the car, got back in the car, and I, people was, <laughs> they was passing by looking, and somebody pulled over, asked, was I okay? I told me, yeah, I'm fine. And uh, so they said, are you sure? I said, yes, I'm fine. But it was at that moment that I had my breakthrough mm. from the grief that I was I was having. That that was my breakthrough moment. Had I mean, take me to the king. I'm offering all I'm. I don't have much to offer, and I, that just meant, registered with me about my baby because of uh, you know her lupus and other things. It, that just registered with me, and I went to work, and that was one of my better days. Um, that day, but from that point forward, I realized that I didn't have to play the oh so sad sack because I lost my child. That it was okay if I smiled again. Mm -hmm. Because in smiling, I recognized the fact not only that I lost her and that she was loved, but I was a child of the king. And through all this, he had me in his hands. He had me in his arms. And it was okay. And he was telling me that all along, but I couldn't hear it hmm. because I was grieving so hard because 
I felt like I had to do this so people would know that I loved my child. Mm -hmm. And after I thought about it, it was really preposterous because <laughs> I know I loved her, but mm -hmm. I had to prove to myself that I loved her. Mm -hmm. So I continued grieving until I had that breakthrough. And it's okay. I mean, sometimes that you are really, really close to a loved one and it may take longer for you to get back to what was normal, but you can start a gradual process. You know, you pray and you ask God, I will pray so hard. And one time I said, Lord, you know, where are you? you you're not helping me <laughs> you know where are you where, where's my help <laughs> i need you but what i didn't understand was he was there all alone because mm -hmm. if he had not been carrying me and caressing me i wouldn't have made it mm -hmm. and he used that song to let me know i've been here all the time you just been grieving so and wrapped up in your own grief that you were ignoring the fact that I was there helping you mm. through this whole process. And so it's okay to get back to your normal process. Your normalcy or your what's normal for you may take you a little bit longer than it takes somebody else. Mm. But don't worry about it. One thing, other thing I had to realize was I knew the relationship that me and my baby had. And it was a simple relationship, but it was our relationship. And I didn't have to let nobody else know I loved her. She knew she was loved. And that was the important thing. You know, a lot of times we get caught up and I wish I had a should have, could have done her. Because I did that. I, I should have known she was as sick as she was. Why come I didn't recognize the symptoms? Why come I this? And a, a dear friend of mine said, maybe God didn't want you to. Maybe he didn't want you to hold on to her. To keep him from taking her. That's why you didn't recognize it. That's why you didn't know. And so we have to get to that point where we can't blame ourselves. We have to realize that the Bible tells us that it's appointed once unto man to live, to die. Mm -hmm. And when that appointment time comes, they're going to go if it's God's will, no matter what. No matter what you do, yeah. no matter who you have there. She was in the hospital. She had the best doctors, but it didn't matter. That was God's timing. That was God's it? time. And there wasn't nothing that we could do about it. But you have to, you have to go through all that to get what's normal for you. Add it. What do you want? To get back to the normal for you. And you want, as he said, your normal may not look like it was, Excuse but me. it can be the best normal that it could possibly be. Excuse me. No. So you know, don't I shoulda, woulda, coulda if I had her, because I did all that. And it just, it just, I got sunk deeper and deeper and deeper into the grief because I was, I should have, I should have known. I'm her mother. I should have. Why didn't I, Joey? I should have. I didn't. I wish I could have. And, you know, after, after God, I opened myself back up to the Lord because I had I shut him off. I had shut him, I had really actually shut him off, you know, out because I, I, I was just, I was just grieving. So I was just so such in the grief. And then after I opened back up to him and I realized that he hadn't gone anywhere, he was there all alone mm -hmm. and he was helping me, guiding me, holding me, caressing me and guiding me through this grief that I was going through so that I could get back to what was normal for me without her. Amen. So it's, it's you know, um, people, uh, everybody grieves different. And if you didn't have the best relationship with the person that passes, that's a bygone. You could not have a, had a good relationship, but you still could have loved them. Mm -hmm. And so you rest in that, that our relationship wasn't the best, but I loved them. And believe it or not, they knew you loved them, whether your relationship was good or not. So don't, don't labor on the fact or linger on the fact that your relationship wasn't great. 
I hadn't talked to him in two weeks. Uh, you know, I should have called. Well, maybe it wasn't for you to call. Sometimes we say there are things that we should do, but there, God don't want us to do them. And my sister in uh, Washington State, she would call me all the time and she would say, we call my daughter Pooh. And she would say, Lulu, I saw Pooh last night. And I'm like, yeah. And she said, she wanted me to tell you and Joe that she's okay. She's fine. Well, I knew she was fine with hair. And I knew she was, but my heart wasn't fine. <laughs> she was gone and I wanted her here. But my head knew that, but my heart hadn't caught up yet. And so once my heart caught up, I can live better with it. I miss her daily. I love her. I'll, I always will. But my, since my heart has caught up, I can live a normal without her. But before that heart caught up, I was in bad shape. I was in very bad shape. But it's a difference when we grieve in Christ than we're not in Christ. So we have to remember that oh, yeah. because we have the assurance that God's going to take us through Absolutely. if we're in Christ because we're here. And he took me through and I praise God for that. He took me through and he's still keeping Amen. me and taking me. Scripture says that he'll, he'll take care of us. Amen. Amen. While we're going through. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes. Uh, Sister Kim Tyler, you have anything you want to say or add or ask? I find I'm going back on what um, Sister Linda said earlier about uh, some things that she did during uh, the holidays, like doing Thanksgiving. As I was making cake, I was remembering her. She would always call and say, "Just don't you make the cake until I'm getting ready to come over there because I don't want to look the bowl." And I was like, "What about the grandchildren?" And she would always say, "They're not your children. I am." I'm your child. Just save that bowl for me. And then when I was making that back, I just literally hear her saying, save that bowl for me. And <laughs> my granddaughters look so, that's my hardest part of getting through. My granddaughters look so much like her that it's just really, really hard to get through. But then I just look at them and just say, thank you, God. Thank you for giving me another one. You know, and they just like her and it. It helps to get through and sometimes it it pulls on me i will mind say it don't pull on me but sometimes looking at those children because they they look like her you know that it pulls on my heart string you know but mm -hmm. i thank god that because i have god in me that i'm able to get through and i have i have i do have a support team amen. you know to help amen. me amen but you know sometimes uh sister kim god will give us or put people in our life that reminds us of the people that we lost for a purpose. He's saying, see, look, I supplied you with somebody else. You say your granddaughters. And when you look at your granddaughters, you can say, oh, if that's not my child, I don't know who he is. <laughs> and so that's, that's a solace in a way. You know, our daughter yes. didn't have any children. She, she, you know, she never had any children or anything, but, um, we still have a lot to remind us of her. So that, that's a good thing that you have your grand to remind you of your daughter. A good thing. Well, one thing we, we must remember in, in, uh, in, in our going through that the love of God is still there. Yes. And, uh, and, and nothing that we go through can separate us from that love in him and our love for our loved ones, there is no, uh, there is no uh, dividing that. He's with us. He's going through with us. He's carrying us, and we can rely on strength from Him while we're grieving. There's so many things that we go through in uh, in 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 the period of of the loss of a loved one. You know, we there's shock, there's denial, there's all types of things. It, and, and emotional outbursts uh, when we're alone, in our aloneness, uh, we, we think about them and, and it overwhelms us sometimes. And this is not only in the recent past, 
But even after years that they, they've been gone, we, we, we remember them and nobody's with us, nobody but you and the Lord. And sometimes they're, they're just overwhelming feelings of, and tears just start to fall. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you have your own personal outbursts of, uh, of remembering and, 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 and you need that strength from God. And he promises to strengthen us in every given circumstance. And I, I just thank him, thank him for that. I thank him for the strength that he has given us, uh, even in the memories of those that have long gone, long gone. Every now and then, uh, you know, I think about my mom and what she meant to and means to me. Uh, my father, what he meant and means to me, you know, and then my I have brothers and sisters that have gone on and what they meant and mean to me currently. So during this pandemic, we know that the wound is fresh right now. The wound is fresh. And, and, and believe it or not, sometimes there is a refreshment of that wound uh, that they're gone. And, uh, and we still grieve. We grieve, uh, we grieve and we grieve again. Uh, their loss, uh, but we, we just thank God for the strength that he gives every believer. He gives us all strength, and we need to, we need to tap into that strength. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord, strengthen me during this time. But believe it or not, that, that the, the stories that we can tell that will aid and assist others in times that will be long gone after a while, but we we go through that we can help somebody else through. We, 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 we encounter circumstances uh, uh, in the loss of loved ones, however they leave, through this pandemic or through a tragic wreck or something, whatever, however they go, sickness, whatever it may be. Uh, we are taught lessons. There are many valuable lessons in the grieving process that we uh, can employ in our lives to assist and to help and to lift up those others who are going through in periods like now. And I thank God for that. I thank God that, you know, <clears throat> the loved ones that have gone and the things that we do go through uh, uh, because of uh, this pandemic or any other crisis, uh, that the lessons that are learned, we are taught those lessons that we might share with others on how we made it and what God has done for us and how he has lifted our heavy burden, how he has dried our every tear, how he overwhelms us with his love and the peace and the joy of Christ because he carries us, he cares for us, he loves yeah. us and, yeah. and he wants us to share with others on how to make it uh, a few times like this. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, once again, you've done an awesome job and helping people to understand how to overcome grief during the holidays. And even though you may be grieving, you can still find some peace. You can still oh, yeah. find some joy. And, and you can find a reason to keep celebrating the, your loved one's life. And, you know, and if you want to start a new tradition, do that. If Absolutely. you want to bake the cake that your favorite loved one used to love to eat Absolutely. and eat it for them, do that. Absolutely. You know, whatever, <laughs> whatever you find that will help you get through the holidays with the Amen. Lord, because the That's joy right. of the Lord is your strength. Amen. And, you know, and we are to grieve with those who are grieving, mourn with those who are mourning, cry mm -hmm. with those who are crying. But Amen. we're also to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. And um, sometimes that's difficult to do in the beginning, but mm -hmm. when you continue to just be free in the Lord and remind yourself how much he loves you and he loves your loved one, you'll find a reason to praise the Lord. You'll find mm -hmm. a reason to say, thank you, Jesus. You'll praise find him. a reason to think, to count your blessings because it is a blessing that one, you got to know them, two, they got to know you. Amen. So we thank you. Linda and Joe, we thank, thank you so you. much thank for you. coming on once again. Thank and um, 
uh, uh, if you would say a prayer for those that are going through this grief process and then uh, Sister Lemon will close us out. Okay. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come again before thy holy presence and we thank you for this marvelous opportunity of grace and peace. We pray for all those who are going through this pandemic. Oh God, those who have who have loved ones who are lingering between life and death. We pray for their strength and we pray, oh God, that you will help them process this time. Uh, yes, it will be a time of sorrow, but you will replace it with your joy and your love and your peace and the blessed assurance of the resurrected Christ. We thank you even now, Lord, for uh, we care and we thank you for this marvelous opportunity of grace. Bless everyone right now in the name of Jesus who are struggling in any way yes. during this time, the crisis of, of hunger, the crisis of losing homes and losing jobs, the crisis of everything, God, yeah. that we're going through these days. Oh God, we pray, Lord, for the replenishment, for the replacement, for the recovery of each and every one. And then those who are grieving, God, give them the strength they need, Lord, to go through. Oh God, and let them know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Bless this ministry continually, as it, it reaches out to thousands among thousands upon thousands of those who are seeking the love of Christ, yes. the salvation of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the grace of God, the sweet communion and fellowship of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for Thank strength you. during these times, even now, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Again, we want to say thank you for thank joining you. us today. We appreciate thank you. you. Uh, very insightful as always, very informative and heartfelt. We appreciate you for sharing your heart with the people of God thank and that we pray that God will heal you, continue to bless you in every endeavor, that he will just make his face to shine upon you and give Amen. you peace. We give Amen. God glory for you and your Amen. ministry and we are Amen. praying for you. Thank and you. so to the people who are looking and seeing and watching and following and liking us today, we thank you for being a part of this audience. And we want to remind you that um, we will be um, seeing you again every second and fourth Saturday for a different topic at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and we're asking that you would please join us. We Care Ministries is here for you. So if you've lost someone and having a difficult time, we want to pray a special prayer for you. So Thank please you. instant message, message us <laughs> and we will be, or you can get a one-on-one -on -one appointment and talk to someone one-on-one. -on -one. We're here for you. You can reach us through emailing us or Facebook at wecare.ministryatt.net. And we will, uh, we're also letting you know that we do have a, YouTube channel, and you can look at all of the previous um, prayers, um, all of the previous discussions at any time. You just simply uh, look up We Care Ministry Support Team on YouTube, and you should be able to find us. Also, remember that we will be praying for you and your loved ones every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, so please submit your prayer requests. We are praying for you, and our list is growing longer and longer, and we want to know if God has done something for you. Amen. Tell us that, too. We want Amen. to bring, celebrate God with you. Amen. So let us know the victory that God is doing in your life so that we can celebrate you. We don't want to keep you on the prayer list and he, done, he healed you already. So let, <laughs> let us know. Give us an update. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because we believe God. We trust God. And we know that he is a healer. Amen. So, uh, again, we're praying for you, your loved ones, and your family members, so please don't forget to like, share, and follow us on Facebook, and remember, We Care Ministry Support Team is here, here helping you to navigate through. <laughs> so tell your Amen. friends and your and family. Your loved ones. 
<laughs> Tell everybody Amen. about we Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, thank you Lord. We thank you for joining us, and we look forward to hearing from you. And and you know, as a challenge, um, why don't if you plan on starting a new tradition, let us know what that new tradition is, yes. and give some of the audience uh, an idea of what they can do like with yeah. the socks or, you know, whatever your new tradition to remember your loved one is. Amen. Let us know Amen. what that is so we can rejoice with you. And Amen. we thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, Pastor Joseph and, and Sister Linda. We appreciate you thank all. You. Thank, thank you for having us. You all thank have a Lord. blessed week in the Lord. We'll Praise see you God. again on the second Saturday. Have a blessed day. Blessings on you. Okay. Absolutely. That's Thank December twelfth. God Amen. bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>